this is Jesse and Alton. The purpose of this presentation is to walk through the configuration of HA edges. We're going to show a picture of the cabling of the back of 22100. And let's assume that the top one will be the active and the bottom one will be passive for storage, just so we can uh, make some, give some examples here. Um, the storage replication will be done through ETH. 0, 0, and 0, 1, which ideally are crossover cables from one edge to the other. And if they're too far away from each other, you can use switches and obviously having um, what a dedicated switch per port would be ideal to avoid um, the potential for split brain if they were both were to go down at the same time when you have a switch outage. Uh, the hypervisor has four NICs of its own and the Rios node has its other NICs, and you can see the division here by the colors. The, the blue is the hypervisor, and the orange is the Rios node. The hypervisor and the Rios node also have an interconnect channel between the two motherboards on the box, and on the 2100s, which is pictured here, there are four of them, and you'll also see them inside of the vSphere client. They'll show up as VM NIC 0 through 4. And uh, they serve both for the purpose of iSCSI and management. Assuming the top one is the active storage node, the hypervisor on that node will access the storage that's served by Rios via that internal NIC. On the passive node, the hypervisor ports will be used to connect via either the primary or the aux on the active storage node. And so the, the storage SCSI path is absolutely from the blue ports to the primary and aux. The replication of the storage is simply through TH00 and 01. And we can show you that how it actually works within the vSphere client. In terms of the hypervisor ports, when you're installing ESXi, if the port zero are on DHCP VLANs, you can just use a standard installer. If you need to assign a dedicated IP, then you have to go through the custom installer. Um, anything from one to all four of them can be cabled now or later. We've already connected storage to the core. We will connect those LUNs to the edges prior to installing ESXi. So LUN alias, we like to use the name of the site code generally, and we have this that's called pod3. So um, that, that's, we'll name these LUNs for our test environment. We added a LUN, pod3. We have not mapped it to an edge yet. We'll connect an edge. We'll go to configure and steel fusion edges. And this edge we're adding is pod3 dash 2100A. So we just have to say add steel fusion edge and then we'll go to configure that at the core. So now you can see that it's fully connected but we have no LUNs yet so we just have to connect the LUN, go to the core and we just have to map a LUN to it. So we map the one. Now we go through the install of the hypervisor. We had installed this before, but if you didn't have it installed before, you would not have gotten that screen. We will start with factory settings. So you see that the LUN's already connected, so we will give it access to that LUN. If you don't have a DHCP server at the edge, you'll need to use the advanced network settings to configure your first vSwitch and management network.
We need a VM port group for our VMs. And that's it. We just have to say next. Perfect. Right now we could actually connect pod or B to A. Sure. So I will now open a new window to this machine and get the serial number. Now. Let's go and connect it up. Active peer. The edge ID is pod 3 a For the active peer and second peer IP addresses, we will use the IP addresses assigned to the data interfaces on pod 3 a Now that we have Edge HA set up, we can install the hypervisor on pod 2100B. While we wait for the hypervisor to install, we can go into vSphere and set up HA, set up the cluster. I'm putting it in a new data center. In creating the new data center, I will call it pod 3 2100 for the 2100 pod. And there I will create a new cluster and then set up HA. So I created the data center, now I am creating the new cluster. I will give the cluster the, a similar name. Now this cluster is ready to add host to. So when the hypervisor is done installing, we just click on Add Host, and we can give it the host name here. This is the first one we're adding. Yes. And the riverbed internal embedded license will not allow us to add the host to vCenter. So we will use one of the licenses we have in house to do this. And then to the same cluster, we'll add the second host as well. You'll see after this host is added that you will have an HA cluster under 2100 cluster. And now on the pod 3A host, you'll see that under storage, we have our storage adapter and our LUN already configured and available. All we have to do now is browse that data store and register the VM. Both SteelFusion Edge devices will see the same data store. As far as the two ESX hosts are concerned, they think that it is the same storage device. So I found the VMX file and I am going to register the VM. I will call it pod 3 2100 win 2012. I hit next, I assign it to the cluster and I can select a host. Because both hosts see the same data store, I can select either host and register the VM and power it on. This is the end of the presentation. Thanks for watching.